Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru wa nasta'hdih. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Ma yahdihi allahu fahuwa al-muhtad. Wa ma yudlilhu falahadiyala. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وبعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمر محدثاتها وكل محدثات بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد brothers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Um, you know, let today be something special for us, just us, al fitra. Okay, and one of the one of the main reasons why we started this jama'a was not to save the world because the world is not for saving. The, one of the main reasons why we started this jama'a was to benefit just ourselves. In a world that's full of chaos and wrongs and deception and lies and betrayal and selfishness, we came up, a few people came together and said, we need a place where we can feel safe. And let today be the beginning of that for us. And I'm going to tell you, uh, you might wonder, what do you mean the beginning? We've been here for a while, some of us. But it will be the beginning for us. I'll explain. But before I explain that, you know, the beauty of Al Fitra itself is the natural disposition of good. And that that is lost. And that is corrupted by constant bombardment of pictures and videos and and, and people's corruption and lies and insults and society and all of its dust and pollution, it corrupts that fitrah. So you find a safe haven, the basement, alhamdulillah. You find a safe place where you can protect it and then polish it. You preserve it and then you clean it. You take care of it consistently and you continuously purify it. And today I want to talk about that because there's a blessed month coming and it's hard to describe as just a month of a year because it's so much more. I want you guys to really look me in the eyes today. I want you to focus on what I'm saying. This is for us. Okay? Ramadan is not just another month and it has been for many years for many people. It's just another month except for some samosa, some special fried things for iftar and, and maybe, uh, maybe a, few, a few special leniencies with family and maybe an Eid celebration of some sort or Eid prayer at the end of it. Aside from that, for most people, Ramadan is just another month. And those things that I just described and a few more decorations people can put on it is not enough to describe what Ramadan truly, truly is. Ramadan, Allahu Akbar, is something that requires faith in the Akhirah, faith in Allah. And we know the, the six pillars of Iman, belief in Allah, belief in His messengers, His books, the angels, the questioning, the day of judgment, Jannah and Jahannam. Yes? That is, the, uh, um, that is the pillars. Those are the pillars of faith, of Iman. So it requires that Iman to constantly, throughout the year, imagine Allah when you can't know He's looking when you can't see him, know he knows and he's aware when you often forget him. And the sunnah of Rasulullah etc. All these things put together. If you continuously do this, when Ramadan comes, something ignites immediately. And I'm going to tell you what. So although you haven't, or you may not have, or maybe you slipped up all year, maybe you didn't realize. So you're going to miss out on that ignition. And today I like to give you that ignition as a gift. And that ignition is this. Let's start with just this. Number one. Allah Azza wa Jal instructs the Malaika. Now just ignore the verb, the, the verbology, ignore the words, ignore my, my voice for a moment and take these words and make them reality in your thoughts, in your heart. That's Iman. 
when you do that. In your heart, make these real. Allah instructs the angels, what kind of sight is that? What kind of situation, what kind of a, what's the best word to describe? What kind of a, uh, an incident or what kind of a significant moment is that? That the malaika are now instructed by the all high, all mighty, all powerful, all knowing. Azza wa Jal. And he tells them and they come down. And they follow the instructions exactly perfectly for by Allah the Malaika do not make mistakes as many in the past have thought they do. Malaika do not have free will. They are like robots but with faith and they go and they exactly to the T they execute and what did they do? So when a Malaika do something what are they doing? Follow, uh, the Following the exact command and will of Allah Azza wa Jal. They will never cross from that. So they go a major, major incident is about to take place very soon. A major thing is about to happen. And the significance of it, Allahu Akbar, they're going to go through the earth. And we know just one angel, because maybe it's hard to imagine when you haven't seen them. And we know from the descriptions of the Prophet Sallallahu just one angel, Jibra'il Alayhi Salam, in his true full form, when he saw him in his first revelation, Iqra bismi rabbika ladi khalaq, when it happened in Jabal Nur, in the mountain of light, in that first revelation, when he came from the mountain, he saw Jibra'il in the form of a man, but then in his full form, he saw him in the sky, he said just one wing would wrap the earth. He said he took the horizons in both directions. That's just one angel. And there's another description of the angels that the Prophet ﷺ gave us when he went on the Ma'raj. And he went up to the heavens. And in the heavens, when he returned from there, many descriptions from that Mi'raj, the miracle journey, miraculous journey. But one description he gave was of the Malaika, of, of one of the angels. He said that the distance of this angel's foot is on the lowest earth. What that means, we don't know. And his head is above the highest heaven. And the distance from his earlobe to his neck, just that distance from his earlobe to his neck, is like a flock of birds in flight continuously for 700 years non-stop. It would take that distance. And even that is just a metaphor for how massive he was. And he said that was one of nine that were holding up the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the descriptions of angels we have are phenomenal. So the angels go to the earth and they go through the earth and they collect something. This is about to happen. This incident is on its way. And this triggers, this ignition happens in people who think of Allah all year. Who think of the Akhirah, who think of Jannah, who dream about the Paradise, who think... And I'm going to make some points about reference to what our main goal and objective is as well, which is Paradise. When you imagine it, you start getting excited. So when this incident happens, people are excited and waiting for it. And when it occurs, many weep. And these angels come to the earth and they collect what? They collect all of the major shayateen that are on your case, on your case every single day. These angels, these shayateen are constantly trying to mislead you, misguide you, twist you, turn you, take you the wrong path. And we're frustrated with them, are we not? Are we not, brothers? Yes. We're frustrated with them. And they, they try to harm us every day and they use one brother against another. One human against another. Whisper to you, oh, he doesn't like you. You look at him. He whispers to him, look at him like this. So he does. And you're like, ah, oh, he doesn't like me. And he does this game back and forth. And he stirs so much evil between husbands and wives and daughters and mothers, etc. All of them are about to go, go into this cell. They're going to be taken, not politely. They're going to be chained up in chains. And they're going to be cast away, and they're going to be kept away from us for the entire blessed month of Ramadan. So that we can relax, take a breather from 11 months of their constant attacks upon us. We're going to get an, we're going to get an opportunity to do what? An opportunity to be yourself. Because you weren't yourself for 11 months. For 11 months you were under some kind of influence. You struggled to be yourself for 11 months. In the month of Ramadan, you get to be yourself. 
There are still minor shayateen around, but they're no big deal. And people should be aware of them and protect themselves from them, and, and you can. But all the major ones tied away. That major significant moment is about to happen. And this blessed month is coming, and that was just a taster. When I say this month cannot be decorated by those few things I mentioned earlier, it's not enough. Ramadan is far, far, and far bigger. Everyone is preparing for it in the heavens. The malaika are preparing to do their job. The, the demons, the jinn, the, the shayateen, they're panic running around, running around, trying to get as much done as possible. Time's running out. They're in panic. It's almost finished. You know the feeling of Ramadan when it's finishing at the end and the last few days? I didn't do anything this month. I want to do some more and it's a bit too late for many people. It's never too late but they feel it. They panic. They want to get more done. Or you're about to go into a meeting you haven't prepared for it. Or you're about to go into a, a lesson, exam and you haven't prepared. Last minute cramming of the knowledge. This is the shayateen right now. Last minute. What are they doing panicking? Trying to tempt you. Distract you. Make you create new habits, new ideas, new fun things. Prepare you to do Ramadan in a way that you yourself would not want. So you have to undo that. The first day of Ramadan. And be yourself. How would you truly want to be? And every single action, every single habitual uh, uh, moment, in that beginning of Ramadan, every single thing you're about to do, you check yourself, is that what I would want to do? And you realize a lot of it is habitual influence from the shayateen all year. He works hard 11 months, not to make you do kufr, not to throw you into a river, but 11 months to make you do something, just a little small thing. Small thing every day, a couple of small things. Why? Can you tell me? Why small? Why not big? Small deeds you don't, bad deeds you don't notice, you don't see a stack enough. You don't pay attention and you neglect it so they pile up. But more importantly, what do they do when they pile up? When you do it over and over and over, what happens? It becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. And in Ramadan, what are you going to do? Do that. That. And Ramadan will come and Ramadan will go. And there's so much more to say about Ramadan. It's such a blessed month. It's that incident of the shayateen being taken away should make us realize how important it is. And it's a time to realize what we've become. Not what we, what we are or what we were, but what we have become through our habits that we have picked up. And we can decide in this one month, 30 days, what do I want to be instead? So in the next few weeks, or the next couple of weeks, the next three, four uh, circles that we have, halakas that we have here, we will go through things and ways to try to prepare and try to cut those habits down so that we can make the most of this blessed month and not let it come and go like we have so many times in the past. So I just want to begin about, uh, I said to you, I would tell you, uh, I would explain it later, about um, the fitrah. Do you remember? What was it? Natural disposition. Yeah, what was I going to say? Um, I said I'll tell you later. I said I'll, I'll, before I explain it, I want to know you're paying attention. Say yeah, I said I'll ex before I explain it, I want to tell you about the ignition of Ramadan. What was I going to explain? Oh, how and, to um, how to get that ignition, right? No, I just told you that. Okay, I'm gonna wait. You think about it and try to remember. Okay, um, first of all, what is our ultimate aim? See, we keep forgetting that as well. Ramadan good deeds, Ramadan salah, Ramadan Quran, Ramadan this, Ramadan that. What is the purpose of all of that? What is the purpose of increasing uh, goodness or even Iman? What is the purpose? Overall, why do you do some of the things you do? What are some of the good deeds people do? Salah. Salah, I said that. What else? Okay, what else? Zakat, Sadaqat, etc. Umrah, Hajj, help the needy, help the poor, help your mom, serve your parents, obey your teachers, so on and so forth. Why do all of that? What's the ultimate gain? What's the ultimate aim, objective?